Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Saturday, November 18th, 11.03 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017, giving you a grand solar minimum update. You're looking at the Oulu Neutron Monitor. Measures cosmic rays hitting the surface of the Earth. What you're looking at is 2015-01 to April 2017, 12% increase in cosmic rays. There are numerous papers out on cosmic rays and their effects on climate. I suggest you Google that and read some. Because what they result in is record flooding, atmospheric rivers, biblical flooding. Tropical storm Kirogi about to slam into southern Vietnam. They don't need this. I mean, this is just storm after storm after storm for Vietnam. Southern Vietnam, hit by devastating floods produced by Typhoon Damry on November 4th, is bracing for yet another tropical cyclone landfall this week. Heavy rain, floods, and landslides are expected over the weekend. Heads up there. There's the landfall. Cosmic ray much? Death toll, Greek floods. We covered the biblical flooding in Greece. It's only going to get worse. There's a Medicaid hitting them right now as I'm making the video, and the flooding is going to increase. But in the last few days, widespread flooding caused by heavy rain in the region of the Greek capital, Cosmic Ray Flux has claimed almost 20 lives. I'll leave you links to everything. Scotland set for snow this weekend as temperatures plummet to minus 4C across parts of Britain. Guys, if you're with us, stay to the end. We're going to be talking about the Pleistocene, cosmic rays, solar forcing, what's going on. Is this just a regular grand solar minimum or is this a big drop-off? Is this the, the big ice age? We'll be talking about that later. Scotland set for snow this weekend, however, as temperatures plummet to minus 4C across Britain. The country is braced for sub-zero temperatures this weekend. Scotland could be hit with snow as the temperatures plummet across UK. Experts forecast sleep and snow sh sleep and snow showers. <laughs> I think they meant sleet. To hit the north of the country with the rest of the UK also feeling the chill. Boom. I love venison. Extreme cold weather at this time, not impossible in South Africa, according to the weather service. It's not impossible in the global warming world we live in, to be the coldest it's ever been. It's not impossible for it to snow in South Africa in the rarest times during global warming. It's not impossible. It is totally possible in the grand solar minimum. Guys, I want to give you some stats here. Now, what we're looking at is a snow cover map. This is from November 1st to the 18th of last year. Okay? Please take a note. Take note at the Canadian Shield here how much of it is not covered in snow on the 18th. I also want you to take note of the ice up here and look at the ice growth and look how far it comes in on the 18th. Okay, I'm going to let this run through a few times so I want you to imprint this. This is last year's winter, the beginning of end of the fall. Look at the ice extent at the 18th of November of last year. Okay? Everybody see it? I ran it through like a hundred times. And let's just go see what's happening now. We're going to submit this. Now what we're about to look at is the United States snow cover and ice extent for the last 18 days. Keep an eye on the yellow. Boom! Keep an eye on the yellow. There is 8,000 square miles more ice this year than last year at the same time. Watch it. Boom! Now this is because of the albedo effect. Now what that is, is all this white here reflects all the sun on Earth back into space. This is a large area of albedo today. <laughs> Check it out. Let's go to the polar map. So everything north of 50 degrees latitude is covered in snow in North America. And the ice is growing at a record rate. Unprecedented Arctic ice currently. Look at this. This is, <laughs> this is amazing. There, the northern passage is closed. 
This ice extent is uh, eclipsing almost any I've ever seen in November. Certainly in my lifetime. So it's going to be hard to hide from this. And plus, look at the amount of snow cover in the lower 48 in November currently. This albedo effect, look at Siberia. Whew. This is a massive amount of all white. It was 33% of this last year. It's three times colder in the Arctic. The ice is closing at epic speeds. I mean, just look at the growth in the last three days. Watch the 15th, 16th, and 17th here. In fact, I'll just put it in and we'll watch it. Let's go from the 13th to the 18th. We're going to do a five-day run, and I want to show you the amount of ice that has grown up in northern Canada in just the past few days. 13th to the 18th. Look at the last two days. It's absolutely mind-boggling and record-breaking. This is hundreds of miles of ice in a single day that extends out into that bay. Hundreds of miles of ice in a single day is forming. This is going to be completely ice covered in a few days. And this is a month out from winter, I guarantee, when this is ice covered. It'll probably be ice covered near the 21st. I mean, this is growing at record rates never seen before in history. That is the facts, folks. Let's move on to the seismic update because this is way too insane to watch. We're going to be covering this almost every night, and we'll cover this bay as it closes. And we'll also note the time it closes up completely and how it breaks every record on the record books. Look at the albedo happening right here. From 45 north, most of the entire northern hemisphere is covered in snow. The land area is over 75% land area covered in snow. If you include the sea ice, boom! Grand solar minimum much? I'll leave you links to all these maps, especially this insane albedo map. Insane. Guys, we still have an uptick here in moderate earthquakes globally, especially around the Ring of Fire. There's been an uptick in activity in Central America, including quakes in uh, Picos, Mexico, and we've had quakes in Argentina and Colombia. But there's an article coming out called The Earth Surge in Big Earthquakes Predicted for 2018 as the Earth Rotation Slows. Yeah, how about the upsurge in Big Earthquakes Predicted by John Casey and others, including myself, as cosmic ray flux increases, causing magma chambers to heat via the bubble muon hypothesis, which everyone can Google. And I have videos on it. So this article is nonsense, but what they are doing is warning us that there is going to be an uptick in large earthquakes, albeit from a different avenue, because they're controlling the dialogue. I'll leave you links to this nonsense. Scientists also aim to fight climate change with super plants. We're going to get to the nonsense on that. Now these plants are going to be geoengineered to sequester carbon in the ground. Guys, I don't know if you know about carbon dioxide or if you've done five seconds worth of research. But what we're going to learn tonight is how ridiculous global warming is. What you're looking at is atmospheric CO2 concentrations through geologic history. The present is here called the Anthropocene, which is uh, so named because of anthropogenic global warming, which is a lie. So this is going to eventually be renamed to the retardocene because that's the state of science. <clears throat> what you can quickly see here, this is minimum, average, and maximum, is the CO2 concentration on Earth, the planet you currently live on that's about to burn up, has been higher in the geologic past than it is today. Today is the lowest CO2 concentration in geologic history on the planet Earth. Let me repeat that. 
catastrophic global warming caused by CO2 that they're taxing you on is the lowest it has ever been in the last 800 million years. Do you find that to be a little ridiculous? That we're all going to die because CO2 is at the lowest concentration it has ever been on the planet Earth in 800 million years? And it's rising above 500 parts per million. Woo! Let's, let's talk about these idiots. What you're looking at is the temperature proxy and the CO2 parts per million estimated for the last 800,000 years. Now, that's all they really show you because for the last 800,000 years, CO2 has been around the 300 part per million mark. But I can assure you that that's not what's happened in the past. So let's talk about the temperature proxy in the Pleistocene. Guys, if you didn't know this, we're living in an ice age. The ice age has gone on for quite some time. In fact, the Ice Age was first discovered by the father of geology, Charles Lyell. I'm going to leave you links to everything here so you can get a good grasp on what's going on here. We're currently living in an Ice Age. For the last 2.58 million years, we've been in an Ice Age. All of the fossils and all of the fauna 70% have all been the same for the last 3 million years. Now, 12,900 years ago, there was an event that cost us 80% of all land mammals. And that event is this straight up blue here. Now, I made this chart to show you how this is... This solar insulation, this is the chart from the sun. Solar cycles that are influenced by the Milankovitch cycles. Each of these gray areas is a 100,000 year uh, eccentricity cycle. These gray areas. And these peaks are the 25,000 year great year, the processional signal, which is the wobble of the earth. And then when they double up like this, you're looking at an obliquity signal, which is a 40,000 year signal. And they become a composite of orbital effects on global temperature. Now the temperature drives CO2. It's not the other way around. Only CO2 deviates when man gets involved and starts burning stuff. But we learned yesterday that plants produce 11 times more than humans on Earth, according to mainstream science. And what I want you to note here is that as we're living in the Pleistocene, which is an ice age, there are these major glacial cycles every 100,000 years of extreme warming that is instantaneous geologically, where sea level rises 500 feet. There's a warm peak and then a drop off immediately after the warming into a deep glacial freeze for the rest of the 100,000 year cycle. And the only time that land, that tropical areas and mammals flourish is in these peaks. And then marine vertebrate and invertebrate creatures flourish in these valleys while mammals hang on. And if you notice, we're in one of these peaks. Peak, 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 peak. I made this graph to show you the warm periods. Over the last half a million years, we've had one, two, three, four, five warm periods corresponding to the 100,000 year eccentricity cycle predicted by Mouton Milankovitch, which we can clearly see here on the Antarctic ice core data. The entire time it's been, we've been in an ice age. And if you look at the pattern and the periodicity of the spikes on this ice data, what they call the Anthropocene or the Holocene is no different than any of these other warming periods during the Pleistocene. So what I want to suggest to you 
is that they're all the same type of event and that simply by naming this event the Holocene and claiming it's different, there is no data to back that up. It's the same as all of these other 100,000 year warming events in the last 500,000 years of geologic history. They all look very symmetrical in their scope and style because this is an external galactic forcing mechanism that causes this on our planet. It's not man. It's not fossil fuel. It's not your BMW. This is an external forcing mechanism, the likes of and scale that is incomprehensible to these peons that can call themselves scientists. Now, what you should notice in all these 100,000-year cycles is an abrupt drop-off after the warming. An abrupt drop-off, and an abrupt drop-off, and an abrupt drop-off. And we are in the phase of the abrupt drop-off. We're at the cusp, and it's very rapid. And we are in an ice age. So we need to stop the nonsense about global warming. Now let's talk about solutions. Ski Lee Mountain Shelters, the most amazing structure I have ever come across. And this will be the norm. This thing can withstand wind and hail. It can house up to 10 people comfortably. It can withstand a 40-foot single snowstorm. The visuals are epic. Could you imagine living in this thing? It would be in, like in heaven. We know how pyramids impart power. Now, the companies that are making these are cutting edge, and the laminated woods they're using, the roofing material, the solar design, self-draining rainwater collection, these are self-contained units. The roof itself, let's just talk about that. The outer shell is designed by SSAB, a Swedish steel manufacturer called Green Coat. The material is created using a bio-based technology using rapeseed oil instead of fossil-based fuel oils. It can withstand temperatures below freezing and high exposure to UV, resistant to corrosion, making it well suited for the grand solar minimum. There are solutions. They're inexpensive. You could build a structure like this for under $100,000. Let's talk about plant light. Now, a Dutch designer, Ermi van Ers, has created a lamp that uses a living plant to generate its own electricity and plans to scale up the technology to power entire smart cities. I sure hope we have time. This lamp is fully self-sufficient, can function off-grid. It does not need to be plugged into any socket. It's microbial energy. I'll leave you links to this. This is the future. And these are the structures we'll be doing it in. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section, guys. Thanks for watching tonight. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Check out our Patreon page. Become a member. Support us there and get access to our greenhouse designs. And you can come out to the ranch anytime. Stay for free. Be safe.